CNN national correspondent Kristen Holmes is joining us uh, now. Can you walk us through um, what Donald Trump has been saying? We've also heard um, from some in his own party um, who have said, look, we need to start looking at Russia very differently. What, what do you think and what, what, what is he telling you? What are the people around him telling you about his reaction to this? Well, Sarah, the reaction is not all that surprising. When you talk about what he's saying, it's really what he's not saying. He's not condemning Vladimir Putin. He's not condemning the death of an Alexei Navalny. Uh, instead, he is using these vague references, trying to compare himself in some ways to Alexei Navalny, saying that he is a victim of political persecution. Obviously, this has been his main messaging line amid all of these various legal cases, that this is all brought by Joe Biden. In fact, he went on to post uh, a op-ed in an obscure media outlet that essentially compared him to Alexei Navalny. Now, his GOP rival, Nikki Haley, as you said, is seizing on this, calling for him to respond. Take a listen to what she said this morning. It's amazing to me how weak in the knees he is when it comes to Putin, because you look at the fact he is yet to say anything about Navalny's death, which Putin murdered him. It's what he does to his political opponents. And I will note that when we reached out to the campaign for a comment on Navalny's death last week, they pointed us to a post by Donald Trump in which he didn't mention Putin or Navalny and instead just said that America is no longer respected. But just a quick reminder that Donald Trump has a history of not only ignoring Putin, but uh, in a sense praising him. Even just a few weeks ago, he alarmed our NATO allies by saying that he would encourage Russia to invade a country, a NATO country, if they had not paid those bills for NATO. Uh, again, sending off a lot of alarm bells throughout the country and throughout the world. Yeah, a lot of concern and a lot of talk about that. We will see what happens throughout the day. Kristen Holmes, thank you so much for all your reporting there in Washington. Let's read what he said. This is his first mention of Navalny, and it still doesn't quite directly get at anything. Uh, writing on uh, Truth Social, the sudden death of Alexei Navalny has made me more and more aware of what is happening in our country. It is a slow, steady progression with crooked, radical left politicians, prosecutors, and judges leading us down a path to destruction. He went on to say, we are a nation in decline, a failing nation. Uh, Kylie, this is, again, the first thing he said about Navalny days after the fact. Uh, you know, how is he trying to use this politically as he runs for another term? It's really just bizarre to watch. He's making comments about it. He also made, you know, a completely unfounded comment that in some way compared him seeing political persecution here in the United States to Navalny seeing political pers persecution in Russia, which, you know, is a comparison uh, that has no actual reality to it. Um, but it's also not altogether surprising if we saw the way that Trump acted uh, when he was president. You know, he had a relationship with President Putin. There were always concerns about that relationship. And so that's really starting to come back to the fore now. And I think the one person that has benefited from this is Nikki Haley. You see the Republicans on the Hill kind of contorting themselves in different positions, trying to stay on the side of Trump, but also trying to be, uh, you know, backers of NATO. And then you see Nikki Haley just really batting it out of the ballpark in such that she's not only saying that Trump has to answer if Putin is to blame for Navalny's death, but also saying uh, Trump has to answer if it's okay for Putin to be killing his critics. If, you know, there's just saying that there's a lot more there. And I think reminding the American public of the challenges that Trump has faced when it comes to his relationship with Russia. And this morning, Donald Trump, I mean, he posted about Alexei Navalny's death, but, you know, he has yet to condemn Navalny's death or be critical of Putin. But Trump uh, did compare Navalny's death to his own political troubles. Uh, what's your reaction mm -hmm. to that, Rena? I find it nonsensical. It's another page out of Trump's playbook that looks to make himself the victim. This is a Republican Party that, again, sort of traffics in fear. And, and what he's doing by picking up the Navalny note is saying, be fearful of what they're going to do to you if you're a dis dissident from somehow the Biden administration. Look, he doesn't understand that communicating this way is, all, is entirely anti-American, frankly. I mean, let's just call it what it is. This is a former president president who's now hawking sneakers for money. I, you, you just got to look at the situation on its face. He's doing everything to save himself. So if that means taking a tidbit of news from over in Russia, even though he frequently calls people commies, 
it just doesn't add up. And most thinking Americans believe this. They know the former president is trying to save himself and he will pick up this narrative and continue forth with it for so long as he continues to get praise in places like South Carolina from sitting elected like Senator Tim Scott and Congresswoman Nancy Mace, who know better. But again, this is a former president in trouble, in peril. And so you're going to see him again, use the messaging that everybody thinks is fine to do these days in the Republican Party, which is cry victimhood. There's a very small segment that is still out here saying we are not victims. We are Americans. And Donald Trump needs to recognize that. And Essie, uh, speaking of those sneakers, uh, I mean, he did launch these gold sneakers and they reportedly sold out within hours after, uh, you know, he was hawking them. Your thoughts? I mean, is this about, you know, just appealing to people? I mean, he's all about branding. I mean, certainly that's not the kind of money it's gonna, that's going to help in, you know, his penalties, court $355 million court penalty. Yeah. And that's just one, right? Um, look, Donald Trump has been grifting off of the backs of his own supporters for years and years, lying to them. Rem remember, you know, the fundraising to stop the steal. He was asking his own supporters to give him money so he could stop the steal of, of you know, his own election. We well, used that money to line his own pockets. Some of it went to Melania's makeup artists. I mean, he is always using his supporters, many of whom have, you know, gone to jail for Donald Trump because of January 6th. He doesn't care about his voters and his supporters. He just wants their money. He'll take the RNC's money to pay off his own legal bills. I mean, it's crass, it's gross, but it's a grift. And you have to wonder when Trump supporters are going to realize that they're being used in this manipulative way. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Essie Cup, Rena Shaw, great to see you both. Thank you.